Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today in this live session as part of Curious About, hosted by Glasgow Science Centre. Uh, my name is Amy, it's lovely to virtually meet everyone who's watching today. And today I'm actually joined in our session by a very special guest, Jenny Murphy, who works for Merck BioReliance Quality Assurance. Uh, Jenny is a quality assurance auditor and she works with scientists who are researching DNA and genetics. And we're really lucky today to have Jenny to talk to us about the basics of DNA, what it is, and how we use it to do research on different diseases and illnesses. Now, today, as you go through the session, if we have anyone who's watching on YouTube, please get your questions submitted using the chat box over there. We also do have some questions that we've got ready that have been submitted by pupils in advance of the session from schools across Scotland, which is very exciting. And we'll try to get through as many questions as possible in our session today. Well, welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm about to hand over to you and get us started. Uh, so please take it away. Hi, May. Thanks so much for that nice introduction. And it's great to have the chance to talk to you all today. So today I'm just going to do a very brief introduction for you to DNA. First off, I would start with a couple of wee fun facts about myself. So my name's Jenny Murphy. Um, I have been part of the RAF Volunteer Reserves while I was at university, while I was studying. Learned a lot of things. It was an amazing opportunity. I also um, spent a few months a few years ago in Borneo, which is in Indonesia on the other side of the world in a jungle. Uh, we did a lot of planting trees, uh, watching some of the animals in the local area. So I've put up just a couple of pictures there as well to sort of show the kind of area I was in. But yeah, just some fun facts to give a wee introduction, but we'll get into it. So to start off, I thought I'd say a wee bit about what is DNA? So DNA is the material that carries all the information about how a living thing will look and how it will function. For instance, DNA in humans determines such things as what color the eyes are, how your lungs work. Each piece of information is carried on a different section of the DNA. These sections are called genes. So DNA is short for big long fancy word deoxyribonucleic acid. It's in every cell of every living thing. Your whole body is made up of trillions of cells. DNA is found in structures of the cell called chromosomes. So it's in the very middle of your cell. Both DNA and chromosomes are really, really tiny. Scientists need really powerful microscopes to be able to even see them. You can't see them with just your eyes. They're so, so tiny. But the functions um, of your DNA, so when DNA works correctly, it helps to keep the body functioning properly. DNA helps to make the substances, it helps to make substances called proteins which the cells need to live. To be able to function, they need proteins. Your DNA helps to make these proteins. DNA also allows a living things to reproduce. So certain sections of DNA are called genes, which DNA pass along physical traits from parents to children. So your parents pass along genes to you. Sometimes there can be mistakes in DNA though. So these are called mutations. They can cause diseases and other problems. So the structure of the DNA is a very complex structure. It's made of chemical substances that are linked together like a chain. And each piece of DNA has two strands or chains. So these two strands are joined together. As you can see in the corner of my slide there as well, I've got a wee picture to sort of explain the structure of it. So uh, these form a shape kind of like a ladder, but this ladder is twisted round. So you can see that in the image. So that's the sort of 3D picture, it's all twisted. It's a ladder with two lines and bits in between. There's chemicals called phosphates and sugars that make up the sides of this ladder, but DNA also has chemicals called bases. So each base on one strand is joined to a base on the other strand, and that forms like the steps in your ladder. So on each side, you have a letter, you have one of these bases. There are four different bases in your DNA. You have adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, but we normally just shorten these to A, G, C, and T to make it a lot easier for everyone to understand. Um, these four letters are repeated in different orders over and over again. So that's all DNA is, for, is basically these four letters over and over again in different orders. Human DNA contains about 3 billion pairs of these bases. So you have one on each side 3 billion times as human DNA. The order in which these bases are arranged is very important. It forms a code that tells the cells to make certain kinds of proteins, which I said before, 
your cells need to be able to function. The differences in these proteins is what makes different living things, such as a cactus, a gerbil, two different people different. It's what makes everyone different. I'll just go on to my next slide. So, what does DNA mean to you and I? Your basic code is already written out. I used a metaphor like a video game. It's already written. You can't control, you can't change any of the basic coding. You can customize certain things, but it's already there. You have no control over it, but you can control, however, your actions and your experience with it. Your DNA determines everything from your hair color to your blood type, everything. DNA, genes and chromosomes, they all work together to make you who you are. Chromosomes carry your DNA in your cells and your DNA is responsible for building and maintaining your human structure. Your genes are sections of your DNA which give you physical characteristics that make you unique. Together, your body has a complete instruction manual that tells each one of your cells how to behave. It can even have a massive impact on your height and your weight. You wouldn't think of these things. These can also be affected by lifestyle, but they're mostly determined by your DNA. About 99% of the DNA in every person on the planet is exactly the same to every other human person. So that 1% is the difference that makes each person unique. Every single person has their own DNA and is entirely unique just from that 1%. It's a tiny little fraction, tiny little bit, but it can make, it accounts for all of the variation in all of humans. But then you also have that same, that's all just four letters, that same four letters, humans, but also vegetables, trees, plants, all four letters. That's all, all, all that it is. And we control none of that. It's all in our DNA. So I'll go on to my next one. So I thought I'd go into a wee bit about why do we age? So our, for our cells to be able to heal, they constantly have to divide and duplicate themselves. This includes the DNA within those cells. A lot of your DNA, like I said, there's a lot of bases, there's a lot of it. A lot of it doesn't do anything. A lot of it's junk. It doesn't code for any specific function. But this is important because as your DNA duplicates and divides itself, it gets shorter each and every time. So this can cause um, errors to happen. This can, you get, DNA has a lot, you have a lot of junk DNA, but this doesn't code. So this acts as a safety to allow for this duplication to happen. And so every time you get shorter, you've got this safety barrier. So then it takes a long time, it actually takes years for any damage to occur from this shortening happening at the ends of your DNA. When your cells divide, they, hand, they basically handwrite your body's instruction manual by copying the original document word for word. It's like writing a sentence over and over again, mistakes happen. There's lots of room for error because your, your cells, they might skip a page, a chapter, or misspell some words. If you have an error, this is known as a genetic mutation. Your instruction manual gives your body the wrong directions, basically. Sometimes a mutation doesn't change how your body works, but sometimes that mutation means that you can't function normally. It all depends what that gene for, codes for. So that specific little bit of code, those specific four, combination of four letters, what protein they code for can be the difference between it not having any impact and it having a big impact. But again, these errors along with the shortening of your DNA causes a breakdown of the normal function of the cells as we age. Because as we age, this happens more and more. So the more and more errors occur. But this process takes many years to get to the point of inflicting any actual damage on your DNA and impacting how your cells function and the normal functioning of your body. So how can we use DNA for research? We can use DNA to research genetic conditions. A genetic condition is a disease caused by a gene that isn't normal. A genetic mutation is a gene that didn't copy down correctly during cell division or duplication as I spoke about previously and has a different sequence or shape from other genes in the body. When you have a genetic condition, your body can't quite develop normal form or function. Sometimes you can inherit this genetic mutation from a parent. Sometimes the gene mutates randomly in you with no history of a mutated gene or the genetic condition in your family. It can just happen by chance. 
there are thousands of genetic conditions that exist, but we can use what we know of DNA to research the chances of a child getting um, a mutation or a condition. We can use it to research different treatments and medicines. So that's where we come in, in as well with what I do a wee bit. So the work I do, uh, I work with some scientists. We run tests on samples sent to us by researchers. They need us to confirm that the code that they're using for their research is the right code that they're looking at. So the right combination of those four letters that's repeated over and over again, they'll send us little samples and we have to say, yes, you're looking at the right combination for the kind of medicine or treatment you're researching. For a new medicine or treatment to be used on people and patients, they need to go through a lot of tests and checks to make sure it won't cause any harm to people because that's the last thing you want to happen. We perform some of these tests that need to be done before they can be used on people. So in my role, uh, in my quality insur assurance role, um, I ensure that the testing that we carry out on the code and the samples that we are sent has been carried out correctly and along with any instructions that we already have in place. I make sure that this has been done exactly right and there's been no issues and then issues do happen so if these issues if any issues do happen any errors occur in our work like it does in your dna i then make sure that any of these have been investigated thoroughly and that any problems never reach the researcher and ultimately the patient that this could be affecting it could be patient samples so we don't know if the results that we are giving could directly impact a patient. So we never want anything that we do to have a negative impact. So we make sure that we have a lot of measures to make sure that everything has gone according to plan and that we can investigate and right any wrongs before anything goes out to any clients. But that's a bit about me, a bit about the work that I do and I just wanted to say thank you. That went a lot quicker. But yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jenny, for sharing that with us and chatting to us about uh, your work. It's quite interesting. I've actually already got some questions I've thought of myself, but let's see what questions right. we've had submitted. Cool. Now, remember, if you're watching on YouTube and you've got that chat box available, you can add any questions that you've thought of to the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can in the time we have left. And I think we've got our very first question coming up for Jenny. And it comes from Lauriston Primary, Primary 6A. Thanks so much, Lauriston Primary. They're asking, when you're born, do you add new DNA to your family line? Or is it all just passed down? Interesting. Thanks, Amy. Now, that's a really, that's a really good question. So you don't add DNA. Basically, you get half of your DNA from your mum, half of your DNA from your dad. And those two are combined. So you get 50% of each and it's combined, but your brother or your sister can have different combinations, but you basically get a combination of previous DNA. You don't create, you can get different errors that have occurred throughout your life or that have happened throughout your parents' life. You could inherit those errors, but you never add DNA. It's all just a combination of what's been passed down from your family. Perfect. Thanks for answering that. Really good, interesting question, mm -hmm. actually. Um, I think we've got another one that we can ask from Lauriston Primary. Lauriston Primary are all over it. Uh, would twins, identical or not, have identical DNA or different? And how do you know if twins are identical? Lauriston Primary have got some good questions. Do. <laughs> yeah, uh, so identical twins, identical, have the exact same DNA. So that happens when they have basically been one that has split into two. So they have originally had the same cells. So that same DNA is going through that same duplication. So they split, they have the exact same DNA. They have gotten the same combination from both parents. Not identical, will have completely separate uh, DNA. But you can, te you can test this by doing blood tests or testing um, samples of cells so you can take the dna out and you can uh, test it to see if it is the same dna um yeah but the, you can then get 
changes in each twin, even if they're identical throughout their life, because of those things that I was saying before, when you can get errors happening in the code, it changes slightly as we age. Not very much, but that can cause slight differences, but identical DNA, DNA for identical twins, yeah. I've actually got a follow-up question, Jenny. So if we had people who were born identical, is there the possibility that as they get older, they don't look identical anymore then? So there could be slight changes. There won't be very much difference um, in appearance anyway, but they could be around about the same height, but not quite the same height, you know, so there could be slight variations, but not much. There's a little bit of wiggle room, not much. Sure, that makes sense. Thank you so much. Let's get our next question then. Lauriston Primary, P6A. How big is an individual bit of DNA? So an individual bit of DNA. So stretched out, if you put all the bases of human DNA side by side and stretched it out, it would be about six feet long or two meters long. So about six feet high. So if you know someone that's quite tall, about as tall as them, human DNA is about three billion bases long. So those four letters, about three billion of them makes up human DNA. So it's quite, quite long. But individual, um, it's in sort of different lengths in your cells. It's sort of cut up into wee bits. So it's in different lengths, but in total, it's three billion bases long. So lots and lots and lots of tiny little bits make something quite long. When they're and all very complex and very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. it's, every, it's the same DNA in all your cells and all of your body. And it is how we function and how we run. It's quite a complicated process to have all of you working at once. <laughs> For sure. We're complicated beings, definitely. Yeah. Let's get our next question up then. So, oh, where is DNA in our body? Of course. So it's in everywhere. It's in all of your cells. So your cells make up every little part of you. You can't see them with the with your just your eye. You need a really powerful microscope to see it. But it's in every single one of your cells. And inside your cells is a nucleus. And in the centre of that is your chromosomes. And then that's where your DNA is. So it's like a it's like nesting dolls. It's within, within, within. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, you've got some really good ways of thinking about this, Jenny. You're helping me visualize it in my in Thank my you. head. Fantastic. I'm glad I'm glad I'm able to sort of explain it well then. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Let's see our next question, actually, see what uh, what we can get you to explain now. <laughs> which living things have the most similar DNA to us and which have the least similar? Interesting. Okay. So the most similar uh, animal is a chimpanzee. It has about 96% of the same DNA. So the same code we have, about 96% similar. The least, it's impossible to tell. We don't know what the least similar is. It'll probably be some small, very small organism that maybe is made up of one cell, probably. Um, but for instance, something like a banana has 60% the same DNA. Um, so a lot of like these kind of things, it's quite a lot of similarities, but a chimpanzee is 96% similar because we have common ancestors, common, going far, far back in history, we came from the same place. So about 96% similar, whereas all of humans are about 99% similar. That's an amazing fact that you've just thrown out is there that we're 60% similar to a banana. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's that's incredible I can't wait to to share that with everyone that I know yep. fantastic <laughs> excellent let's see if we've got another another question for Jenny oh I think we've we've kind of touched on this one a bit can your DNA change as you get older yeah it does a bit so it it doesn't change change it just there'll be slight little mutations slight little errors it'll get a wee bit shorter but overall, it doesn't change. So, for instance, your eye colour is not going to change. You know, there's certain things that will never change. There will just be tiny little mutations and tiny little differences will happen as you get older. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, I think um, the, the thing about 
your eye color being different from other people and your hair color, you know, that's something that sticks with you. It's really interesting to sort of look at the differences between us and mm-hmm. know that we're so similar, but we all look so different. It's it's amazing yeah. for me to think about. Absolutely. And it's the one percent of a difference as well. Yeah. And that accounts for every every difference in every person. It's one percent. Yeah, it's amazing to think about. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I think we've got a couple more questions that we can we can ask Jenny. So can we oh this is an interesting one can we change the dna that's in someone's body to help them if they are actually ill it's a really good question and it would be amazing if we could but because it is in literally every single one of your cells it'd be impossible to be able to change it in every single cell it'd be great if it was in just one place and they could just change that and that changed it in all of your cells but there's no way of have really been able to change every single cell so unfortunately it would be great we can just use what we know of it to help people that are ill so we can maybe do tests on sequences that are on codes that they have to see if certain things are going to work but unfortunately no you can't we can't change dna Mm -hmm. we've not got that power yet anyway (laughs) you never know and actually that question has made me think about for example when people go to give blood, they donate blood to help others who are ill or they donate Mm -hmm. stem cells. Is there restrictions on that because we all do have different DNA? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. So for blood, um, there are certain restrictions. So you can only receive blood of of someone with a similar blood type. So similar to DNA, there is only certain... uh, I say similar to DNA, but there's only certain... um, blood types you can be um you can only receive certain blood types but there's type o this is going off topic but there is a type o which is a uh, there are certain ones that are anyone can get and there's one type that anyone can receive but yeah you do have to know a wee bit about what the person is to be able to get a certain one and then with stem cells as well you need to a lot of testing needs to happen to be able to make sure that they are a match because certain things will have to match up with their DNA and with their coding to be able for it to work, for it to do any good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Really interesting that um, yeah, you have to look really closely to make yeah. sure we're enough of a match. Amazing. I think we've got a couple more questions that we can ask as we approach the end of our session today. So our next one is... Oh, can you tell us a bit more about your journey to where you are now? Let's hear a bit about you. Sure. So, um, yeah, all my life I have been very interested in sciences. I was always the kid that would want, you know, the little microscope set from Christmas and want the little science kits and things. Um, Yeah, no, I went through uni, university, studied. I studied applied biosystem, uh, applied bioscience, at um at university got my honors degree um i actually started working in a lab after university um where we made i used to actually make little bits of dna that we would use to then make bigger chains of dna to use for research we actually the company i work at now um we actually use the stuff i used to make which is quite funny when i saw that come up again um so i used to work in a lab where i used to make dna and then i moved into actually sales so I sold some of the um, chemicals and things that uh, researchers would need to do some of these testing and to do some of this research and then that's when I came over to the role here to work with our scientists at Merck. Thank you so much for for sharing that with us everyone's got really different journeys yeah um, to get to where they are so it's just really interesting to hear about yours fantastic do you know jenny we've got one more question for you in our session today and then we'll wrap up and oh it's a live question which is what advice would you give to someone looking to work in life sciences in the future that's a really good question you know what i find really good is watching documentaries about different aspects of science it's a good sort of introduction because it can be quite overwhelming if you like look up stuff online or if you want to look at a course or you want to learn more it can be very there's a lot of information out there but I think some of the documentaries that you can get you can watch are really interesting and offer really good insight 
and you can always just reach out and ask you know especially people at the science center you know it's a really good tool to go and ask people there as well but yeah no i would say i love all these kind of like science documentaries and nature documentaries because there's a such a vast array as well you can watch so many different kinds and really find what you're interested in because there's science is such a wide subject so you can sort of pick out little subjects that you find interesting and then research more on that and then really see and talk to your teachers as well you know they might know of you know routes that you can go down or they might have advice for you or you know can help you towards that path as well yeah absolutely yeah you're so right there are so many different people that are really happy to talk to anyone who's interested in getting into sciences whether it's reaching out to um people like ourselves at the science center or like you say speak to the adults around you and um get their advice and uh, let them sort of give you um, hints and tips on how to follow your passions. But thank you so much, Jenny, for joining us thank today you. and sharing all of that with us. That's been really great to hear from you and chat all about your work. Um, and of course, thank you to our audience for your brilliant questions, but I'll say goodbye to Jenny for now. Thank you so much. Now, if you are watching this and you would like to find out more about what Merck BioReliance do, the work they do, you can head to www.bioreliance.com forward slash GB. And of course, for more content from ourselves at Glasgow Science Centre, you can visit the Curious About website. So that is at curiousabout.glasgowsciencecentre.org. So if you head there, you'll find lots more interesting content like games and activities, plus all of our live events are recorded and will be available to play back later from the website too. The last thing from me is to say we would love to hear what you thought of our live session today. And a link to a very brief survey is coming up in the YouTube chat box. If you're watching over on YouTube, if you could fill that in, let us know. We would love to hear what you thought. But for just now, it's bye from myself and from Jenny. And thank you so much to you for watching. See you later.